You are listening to the Super Mom is Getting Tired podcast. I'm your host, Tori Henderson, and this is episode 125. All links and show notes can be found by going to lifecoachingforparents.com slash 125. Welcome to the Super Mom is Getting Tired podcast. This show is designed for moms who invest everything into parenting, but get overwhelmed, lost, and resentful. Listen and learn how to unburden yourself, feel calm, full of energy, and in control. I'm your host, Master Certified Life Coach, Teacher, and Recovering Supermom, Tori Henderson. Hello there, Supermoms. If you are listening to this, when it comes out, I am impressed because it is probably the busiest time of year for a lot of moms. And uh, it's gotten a little crazy. So if you are in the birthday party, graduation party, end of the year party, celebrations, then I say congratulations to your kids for their achievements. And congratulations for you, Mama, for getting close to the finish line. If you work in a school or anything that follows the school calendar, then you are approaching the finish line and it's very, very exciting. And I'm surprised you have time to listen to this podcast. But I'm happy you're here. Usually this time of year, I get questions about disappointments and I didn't get any this year. So if you are not celebrating or your kid is not celebrating because they're feeling disappointed or maybe they're having to do both, they're celebrating graduating from high school, but they're disappointed about college or they're disappointed about what's coming next for them. Um, Usually this time of year, I get disappointments around kids' grades showing up on report cards, around kids not wanting to go to prom or not wanting to participate in the celebrations and parties and stuff. So if you are in that boat, please go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash record my question with dashes in between. So it's lifecoachingforparents.com slash record dash my dash question. And you can record it or you can write it. But I would love to know what kind of disappointments are befalling you or your kiddo because everybody loves those because it makes them feel seen and heard. Because if you go on social media, everyone's happy and celebrating and you don't see the behind the curtains disappointments that are actually happening. So please email me, let me know. Today, I have a special treat for you. I am going to give you as a podcast the webinar I did called Stop Nagging and Repeating Yourself. So if you are listening to this and you think, oh my gosh, this is so good. I want to see it. I actually want to see the visuals and the graphics. Then you can go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash no nag, (laughs) no hyphen nag, and sign up and I will email you a copy of the actual webinar. It was really, really good. Very, very important, especially if you are looking at summer and having your kids around you more often and they're sitting at home and they're making more messes and you want them to help you clean up and take responsibility, then this is a webinar for you. So you can go get the whole recorded thing at lifecoachingforparents.com slash no dash nag. And here it is. Hello and welcome to the free masterclass, how to stop nagging and get your kids to listen the first time you ask. I am Tori Henderson with lifecoachingforparents.com. I'm so glad to see you here. This webinar is the most important webinar I've probably ever done. So I'm so happy that you made time to be here today and to watch it. This is something you've never heard of before. The thing I'm going to teach you today, I have never seen taught anywhere. And so when we're learning something new, we need to make sure we're putting our full attention on it. So all you super moms out there who are busy and you don't have a lot of time to put your full attention on one thing, I want to ask you to have your full brain power on this. Don't try to watch this when your kids are in the house or the TV's on or you're multitasking. Don't have multiple tabs open on your computer. Okay. You can fold laundry, you can walk the dog, drive around in your car, but make sure your brain is 100% focused because you will get the most out of it because this is really, really valuable stuff. 
So who is this webinar for? This webinar is for parents who want to be relaxed and playful with their kids, but they struggle to be there. (laughs) It's hard for them to relax because there's too much to do and not enough time to do it. And so there's too much time spent nagging the kids. Parents who get really fed up with the arguing and the pushback every time they ask their kids to help out and to do something that they're supposed to be doing. Parents who want their kids to take on more responsibility, but they aren't sure how, how to delegate. How do I do that that actually works and gets them to comply? Uh, This webinar is also for parents who feel guilty, exhausted, or snap into the, what I call exploding doormat syndrome which is the like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. I don't, I can do it. I'll suck it up. And then all of a sudden I can't take it anymore. I do all the work around here. Nobody's helping me. If you fall into that exploding doormat syndrome, you are in the right place. Um, Also, if you just want your kids to do something the first time you ask, because that is a beautiful thing. So I want to talk a bit about what's not working. We spend too much energy getting our kids to focus on things they should already know how to do. Come in from school, hang up your backpack, put your lunch bag on the counter, you know, the morning routines that they do every day. Like, come on, eat your breakfast, brush your teeth, put your shoes on. Like, they should know how to do that on their own, you know, the the daily stuff. And so it drains our energy when we feel like we have to constantly stay on top of them. You know, I ask this question of what, drains your energy the most in my super mom is getting tired Facebook group. In order to join the group, you have to answer that question. And this constantly nagging and repeating myself is the number one super mom kryptonite. The number one thing that drains our energy and makes us exhausted. So it's just not working for us. You know, when you say, hey, uh, can you empty the dishwasher? And your kid says, oh yeah, sure. But then disappears for hours, leaving us wondering, like, should I remind them? Did they forget? Are they going to come down later? You know, should I text them? Like, we don't know what to do. You know, should we just do it ourselves? Like that, it just creates a big energy drain. In fact, I would ask, what percentage of your energy do you think is spent trying to get your kids to do things? For a lot of us, it's a pretty high number. And especially in the summertime, when we're with them more often, it's a lot. So it's just not working for us to be so drained all the time. We let them play on their devices longer than we know is good for them because we get scared of their reaction when we tell them it's time to get turn it off and get work done. You know, we, we're afraid to go into battle and we know it's going to be a battle. And so we avoid it naturally. Who wants to go to battle with their kid? And so they just end up spending all day on devices. So this isn't really good for them. And so we just get so used to the arguing and pushback that we feel defeated before we even begin. We just think, oh, it's easier just to do it myself take on all the work and then get resentful. So it's good to remember that responsibility is good for kids and it's good for adults. My goal is to teach you the exact steps that you need to get your kids to listen and obey you and why it matters. You know, it's good for kids to not feel like they're the most powerful person in the house. It's Kids relax when there's another calm, confident leader. They can then sit back and not feel like they have to run the show. Even if it seems like they want to have the power and be the boss, it's still not good for them. Kids like to feel responsible. They want to be capable and be able to you know, take responsibility for their lives and their daily chores, and they want to feel empowered. So when we can delegate to kids and trust them to do what they're supposed to do without needing to be nagged. It benefits our kids. It benefits us because we suddenly have a little more mental real estate. Our energy is freed up. We get to pursue things that matter to us that are important more than just brushing your teeth and going to bed, but like other things that make our lives richer. But I also think it's very important because When moms are empowered to make things happen and get what they want, the things moms want are really good for 
people, for society in general. You know, we tend to prioritize children first and foremost. And so when we start feeling empowered, like I can go after what I want, you might be more likely to advocate to the teacher to, you know, make some accommodations for your student, to volunteer on the PTA, for run for public office, you know, to be more empowered at work, to be a good role model for your kids of what it looks like to create a life that you want and to go after it with confidence. Like good things happen when moms believe in their ability to get what they want. And so this matters to me because you know, I'm not in your house. I'm not having to listen to the nagging every day, but I want to live in a world where moms feel empowered to ask for what they want and know that they can get it because the things that moms want are usually really good for children and for society. So that's why I am here today. And I'm super glad that you're here too, because it's very important stuff. As a thank you for attending this uh, webinar, I'm going to send you a cheat sheet it's uh, how to be a calm, confident leader. So you don't have to take notes during this webinar. You can just listen and you can be driving around in your car and I will send you the cheat sheet that you can print out and keep handy. So check your email. It will be coming soon, today or tomorrow. So who am I? I am Tori Henderson. I'm a master certified life coach for exhausted super moms. So I've been doing life coaching for about the last 14 years. I'm host of the Super Moms Getting Tired podcast. I work as a parent educator, a classroom teacher. I teach sex education classes. And I also had developed a girl's leadership camp curriculum. And the thing I'm going to teach you today, I used to teach to 12 to 14 year olds in this uh, girl's leadership camp called Getting What You Want, how to know what you want and how to go out and get it. So I've been teaching this to tween girls. And now I'm going to teach it to mamas. Uh, I'm also a mom, of course, of two perfectly imperfect, almost young adults. So I've been through it, been where you are, and I am happy to have you here today. So I wanted to tell you about a little bit how I discovered this thing I'm going to teach you today. And this all started for me back when I was uh, going through the teacher credential program. I decided I should substitute teach because that's how you get a lot of world, world experience. But it was 5.45 in the morning and it was still super dark. The sun was just barely coming out and my phone rang. And on the other end of the phone was the Irvine Unified School District asking me if I was available to substitute teach that day. So I push one to hear the job and I hear the recording and it's sixth grade. Ugh. You remember sixth grade? I remember they would tear their substitute teachers to shreds. <laughs> Like sixth grade was hard, but I, and I was super nervous because I never managed a classroom before. I worked with kids my whole life, but I'd never been in charge of a group, but I mustered up the courage, gave myself a pep talk, and pushed one to accept the job. So by the time I'm walking onto campus, I'm feeling a little more confident. You know, I was young and pretty back then. Kids usually liked me. I like 11 to 12 year olds. I'm sure they would find me a worthy substitute for their day. So I walk in the room, I'm smiling at the kids. They're giving look at me suspicious, like, who's this lady? And I they take out their homework. We do the daily math, the journal write. It's all going okay. But about an hour in, I start teaching them the English lesson. And I noticed that they weren't listening to me. I was having trouble keeping their attention. Some of them were talking, others were turned around in their chairs. Some were like drawing on their desks. So I'm like, hey kids, eyes on me, you know, over here, this is what we're doing. Now pay attention. And that wasn't really working. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll like write their names on the board, like get them, to, this is a warning. I see you're not listening. And so I was trying to be a disciplinarian. And I would like walk over to the kids that were ignoring me and stand right in front of them. Or I'd start taking pencils away from the kids who were drawing on their desks. Like I'm trying everything. I'm being nice. I'm being mean. Nothing is working. And my energy is draining fast. So by the time the kids go out for lunch, I'm flatlined. (laughs) I'm already exhausted. So I'm like, I've got to do better. I've got to figure this out. So the kids come back. They're lined up before they even come into the classroom. I tell them what's going to happen. It's a good teaching technique and a good parenting technique, right? Tell them what to expect. 
So I said, okay, kids, you can come back in the room now, but this is silent reading time. You same thing every day. You've been doing this all year after lunch, you come in, you take out your books and no talking. You're just going to sit in your desk and read your books. So they, I, I checked to make sure they understood me because that's a good teacher technique too. Like, does everybody understand what is it you're going to do? Yes, Ms. Henderson, we understand. So they come back in, they sit down at their desks, they take out their books, and they turn into chimpanzees. <laughs> These kids start like sitting on top of their desk, crawling below their desks. They're like, our teacher lets us go to the book book. Our teacher lets us do buddy reading. And so the volume in the room is just getting louder and louder. I'm like, kids, quiet down. I don't know. I'm going to take away your privileges. Like, it's just a zoo. So by the time the neighboring teacher pokes her head in, it's so loud in there. Nobody can possibly be reading. She looks at me. She looks at the students and she says, everybody sit down, take out your books and read silently. And every single kid in the room did it. Nobody argued. No one negotiated. They just obeyed her. And I was like, what did she do that I didn't do? I've got to figure this out or my teaching career is going to end before it begins, right? So I left that day completely exhausted, felt like a failure, but knowing I was going to have to go back in and try it again. So then the next class, I go to substitute. I just declined middle school. And I said, yes, to second grade, I'm like second graders, like they're super cute. You know, they know the whole school routine. They're, they like me. I like them. Like I, you know, little kids love me. It's great. It's going to be good. Couldn't have just been me. Right. I go into second grade, but sure enough, it's like the same situation. Trying to get them to line up to go outside is like herding cats. Trying to get them to come sit on the rug. It's like watching puppy dogs wrestle. The, the classroom was a noisy, chaotic zoo. And again, the neighbor teacher comes over and she says to my class, she walks in with, and says one word. She looks at me, she looks at the kids and she says, uh-oh. And a hush falls over the room. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> so I'm like, I have to figure this out. So I'm trying, I'm doing lots of trial and error. What works, what doesn't. I'm studying teachers who are really good at it. I'm studying teachers who struggle like me to get kids to listen to them. And, you know, I'm having some progress, but nothing really impactful until one day I'm walking out to my car at the end of the day, it's cloudy outside, you know, going out the parking lot. And I realize. I'm feeling energized. I'm not tired. Usually I end every day exhausted. And today I'm feeling pretty good. And I felt my body was like calm and relaxed. I'm like, this is interesting. I wonder why. And I felt like the students I had just been teaching, I felt that they, I felt confident that they learned what they're supposed to learn. So what I realized was that when I was teaching my EL kids, by English learners, the kids who didn't speak English, they listened, they followed directions, they did what they were told. When I was teaching my English only kids, they disobeyed me, <laughs> they talked, whatever. There was a huge difference between how my kids who didn't speak English behaved compared to my kids who did speak English. Now, this did not make logical sense to me. You would think that the kids who understood my verbal language would obey better, but it was the opposite. So I analyzed myself like, what am I doing differently with my EL kids that I wasn't with my English only? And I started to pay attention to voice tone, posture, all the other elements besides the words I was using. And I discovered the energy of leadership. I broke it down into six simple steps that I'm going to teach you today on the webinar. And you use these to get your kids to listen. I call it the silver listen lesson. No more exhaustion, 
no nagging. It's just your leadership energy that kids are wired to respond to because we're all animals at our core, right? So we have this, our little brains are wired to respond to calm, confident leadership. So obviously this was a game changer for me as a classroom teacher, but what I did not realize at the time was how valuable this leadership energy would be in other areas of my life. I have used this energy to get my kids to clean their rooms. I've used it to get paid more money from my employers. I've used it to get um, comp-free hotel rooms. (laughs) I used it to get my husband to go on the vacation that I want to go on. I use it to get my dog to stop whining. I use it to manage my anxiety and quiet that inner perfectionist voice in my head. The possibilities for this leadership energy are endless. It's not just about getting your kids to do what you want them to do the first time, although that is a huge game changer, let's be honest. But it's about being the leader in your own life knowing that you can create what you want while giving kids what they really need because kids don't like knowing that they are more powerful than the adult in the room. They relax when there's a calm, confident leader present and you can give that to them. So here's what normally happens. We create a chore chart. We're like, okay, the kids aren't helping out. I need them to take on my responsibility. We're gonna print this off of Pinterest. We'll put it on the wall. And every day the kids, you know, mark down what they've done. They get a sticker on the chart. They get a reward at the end of the week and they create a really cute chart chart. And this works. This is great. Everyone's excited. It works really well until it doesn't. Kids forget. We forget. We don't follow through. If something happens, it lasts for like a week or two or maybe three, but then it just kind of falls back to where it was before. And, and we're right back where we started because we haven't changed, right? So the other thing that normally happens is we get so exhausted (laughs) and burned out that we're just like, I'm just going to do it myself. Like every mom knows it is easier just to do it yourself than to try to teach your kids how to clean a bathroom or how to load the dishwasher. I mean, like it takes so much more time that you're like, oh my gosh, it's just not even worth it. But then we get overburdened, overwhelmed with parenting responsibilities. We get resentful and we're just not we turn into exploding doormats, <laughs> which then we feel guilty for, you know, it's just not a pretty thing. So the other thing that normally happens is we yell. We figured out that, oh, my kids actually respond when I yell at them. But then it seems like it's the only way to get your kids to pay attention and the only way to communicate that you mean business, you know? So then we yell, but then we feel guilty and we feel like, got this I'm not being the person that I want to be. Like, I don't want my kids to remember me as this yelling, nagging mom. And so that weighs heavily on us because we're not really getting to enjoy raising our kids. So those don't really work really well. So I'm going to tell you about Sherry. She was stuck in this exploding doormat syndrome. Sherry felt bad asking her kids to help out around the house. Does anybody relate to that? She felt that maintaining the house was her responsibility. And she attracted responsibilities like a magnet. She felt that the, her kids' social calendars was her responsibility. What they ate, the foods she cooked, the grocery shopping, the cleanup, that, you know, managing her kids' homework was her responsibility, managing their social lives, their transportation. Like she just kept putting it on and on more and more responsibilities onto her shoulders. And this weighs fairly, very heavily. So she would turn into this exploding doormat. She's like, I can't take it anymore. Which then would just make her feel guiltier for yelling at her kids. And it just kept perpetuated the cycle. But Sherry listened. She learned the listen lesson. And it changed her life forever. Want to know why? Because all of a sudden, she knew she had the power to get her kids to listen and obey her. Instead of feeling guilty and blaming her kids for leaving messes or blaming herself for yelling, she practiced her skills. She had something to focus on and do that she had control over. She could want, monitor her, her energy. She could approach them from her calm leadership, confident energy, and they would obey. So it was like all of a sudden it was, she was focusing on the things she did have control over. And the more she practiced it, the more her confidence grew. 
having her family take on responsibilities around the house made her feel part of a team. She, when she wants help now, she knows she can get it. Her kids are enjoying a more chill and relaxed, playful mom. And the whole house has a more positive, mutually supportive vibe. So I'm going to name three surprising secrets to stop nagging and get your kids to listen. The first one is it's about energy. Repeating ourselves is not the problem. You know, parent, people will say that, like, I hate repeating myself. That's not the issue. We repeat ourselves all the time. Yes, please. No, thank you. Buckle up. Don't forget, bring a jacket. I love you. None of those are a problem. The problem is when we do it from a disempowered energy. Nagging creates a disempowered energy. So the definition of nagging is constantly harassing someone to do something. Well, the only reason you would harass someone to do something is you don't believe you can make them do what you want. (laughs) So the other definition for nagging is persistently painful or worrying. Like I have this nagging voice in my head. So for a lot of us, the unfinished tasks around our house nag us, right? We walk through our house, we're like, ugh kitchen needs to be cleaned up. The laundry needs to be done. I've got these emails to finish. Uh, The school, you know, needs me to fill out this form. Like there's all these unfinished tasks and we allow them to nag us and then we nag our kids. And so it's the energy that we're in. That's the real problem. That's what we need to fix. So the college application process was driving Tanisha crazy. Her son seemed incapable of managing this process on his own. So every day she would nag him, remind him, coax him into getting these applications done. It was exhausting. It was like trying to drag a um, a donkey, you know, like a really stubborn mule to the water hole. It's like, uh, he just wasn't doing it. So she adjusted her energy using the listen lesson and everything changed. Tanisha still followed up. She still checked on his progress, but from an energy that was empowering to herself as well as her son. She became more of like a project manager than annoying, naggy mom. This helped her son believe that he was ready for college because mom is talking to him as though he is this capable teenager, almost adult. So together, they started watching YouTube videos about college life, which made her son more excited, which made him less avoidant of the task at hand. So it totally changed, even though she still had to remind him. But her energy was empowered and calm and confident, and that helped them both make it an easy college application process. Well, maybe you're not like Tanisha. Maybe you've got little kids at home. So that was Stephanie's case. So she had three kids under six and she was overwhelmed by the chaos and the toys and the clutter in her house. She says, I need the oldest two to pick up after themselves. And she knew it was possible because she saw the preschool teacher rally 18 kids all at the same time and they obeyed. So Stephanie tried to copy. She tried cleanup songs, labeled baskets, chore charts, but her kids still ignored her. When she came to life coaching, she was able to see that she wasn't coming from leadership energy. Together, we identified some blocks, some things that were keeping her from her calm, confident energy, and we moved them out. So now her energy is aligned. She is in her calm confidence. And now she's trained her kids to clean up automatically every night before bed. No arguing no complaining. Just like they put their seatbelts on every time they get in the car, they know it's their responsibility to clean up after themselves every night. Grandma is especially impressed when they do the same thing at her house. So it's not what you do or say, but the energy you are in that matters. The energy of worthiness of confidence and positive belief is one of the things that makes people listen and obey. And that is a great energy for us to dwell in. 
worthiness and confidence and positive belief. That's great role modeling. It makes you a better partner, a better mother, a better employee. Like it's, it's a really powerful energy to be in. So surprising secret number two is that anybody can learn it. Yes, some people come to it naturally. In fact, I was at my daughter's award ceremony last night at her high school, and some of these kids are freaking impressive. By 18 years old, the things they've accomplished is way more than I've accomplished in my entire life. And they just exude this energy and this attractiveness, right? They're, they, people like them, teachers like them. People want to give them money for, you know, they want to give them scholarships and awards and accolades. These are the kids that get hired after every job interview they have. They're chosen as team captain. Like, yes, some people come to it naturally, but anybody can learn it. There just isn't anybody out there teaching it that I've been able to find. So Aditi was one of these people. She didn't think it was going to work for her. She'd spent too many years with strong-willed argumentative kids. Anybody else out there have strong-willed and or argumentative kids? God bless you. So she thought nothing's going to change, but she figured there's no harm in scheduling a free Zoom call with me. So on the call, we practice the energy of leadership. And once she had a felt experience, like what it feels like to be in this calm leadership energy, she realized she was in that when she was teaching yoga. It felt the same. So she took her experience with yoga and being in that energy state and used it to get her kids to do what they wanted. But she didn't have a lot of confidence in the beginning. So she picked something really easy and small to start with. And I suggest you guys do this too. Don't start with your biggest trigger if you don't believe it's possible. Build up your confidence with small stuff. So she started with getting her kids to come in the door, hang up their coats and backpacks, put their lunch on the counter. And once she saw how well this worked and that they just complied, then she could move on to other areas and build up her confidence slowly. So neither school nor homeschooling was an option for Miranda's ADH son. She was really ADH son. She was really stuck in the middle, feeling like there wasn't just a great option. She used the calm leadership energy to get him to like come to the table. She could use it to get him to take out his books and his homework, but she couldn't get him to focus on something that didn't interest him, right? That's kind of the nature of ADHD is they have a really hard time paying attention to things they find boring. So Miranda had gotten a taste of homeschooling during COVID lockdown, and she wasn't super excited to go back, but she also felt like the school was not giving him what he needed. So she used her calm leadership energy to advocate for her son with his teacher and get him the accommodations that she thought would help him succeed at school. And guess what? It worked. But why this was so magical and exciting for her was she had requested the exact same thing three months earlier and got nothing, crickets. So she changed her energy when she went to talk with the teacher. And this time the teacher's like, oh yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. So this doesn't just work with kids. You can use it in other areas too. The energy of leadership is something that everyone can and should learn. Now I did learn in college, I was a communication studies major, and we learned this 738, 55% rule. And this is, means that 7% of communication happens verbally, 38% of communication is happening through your facial expressions, your voice tone, and 55% is communicated through body posture. Well, actually, I guess face expressions will go in the 55%. 38% voice tone, 55% body posture and face expressions. So this is what I took the long road around to learn. Because even though I learned this in college, nobody really explained how to apply that in a practical way that helped benefit my life. It was just numbers, but it explained why my English language learners were obeying me and not my English only. Because when someone is verbal and they understand your words, we become overly dependent on it. We talk and talk and talk and talk. 
And we think that that's going to help them listen and hear and obey. And it doesn't because 55% is body language. And we tend to be overly emphasized on verbal and not emphasized enough on body language and voice tone. And that's where your power lies. So surprising secret number three is that we are socialized out of our leadership energy. As women especially, some men too, but women especially are socialized out of it. When I'm coaching moms on finding their leadership energy, they will often say that it feels mean or they don't want to be bossy. They're afraid that other people are going to, how they're going to react. Um, They think it's not okay to ask for what they want that other people's needs are more important and that it's, they should make sure their kids are happy and their kids are getting what they want instead of focusing on their own. They want, and like, it's all this disempowering energy. And I like to call these leftovers, leftovers from middle school, that uh, part of it's just subconscious programming. We pick up from movies and TV and commercials and our parents, but part of it comes from middle school because in middle school, girls discover that Fitting in and blending in and being just like everybody else keeps you safe. It keeps you from being judged in a very judgmental culture. Uh, If you wear the same things and talk the same and they're exactly the same as everybody else, then nobody can call you out for being different or standing out amongst the crowd or judging you. And so we learn this is like a coping mechanism to be safe, to not ask for what we want and not advocate and believe we have personal power. So this is kind of leftovers that aren't really uh, helpful. So Lauren's story was that her whole life, she'd been told that she was too nice. She, so she didn't think that the listen lesson would work or she'd be able to integrate it because she thought this was just her personality type. that She was just way too nice and accommodating. But with life coaching, she learned that she approached life like a baby bird that she's been avoiding power her whole life. She just kind of sits there like a baby bird, like waits for someone to drop a treat in her mouth. Like, oh, maybe the kids will notice how tired I am and they'll come help me in the kitchen. Or maybe my husband will uh, let me have a day off or he'll tell me to go uh, spend some money on myself. And she just kind of waited for a treat to be dropped into her mouth. And as she learned this, she decided she wanted to be more mama lion than baby bird. So she learned to use her leadership energy for something she'd been wanting for a really long time. Instead of focusing on chores and the kids doing their homework, she decided to focus on taking a vacation with her sisters. She realized this baby bird was never going to get it unless she made it happen. And it wasn't easy. She was scared to prioritize her own desire. She was scared to ask for what she wanted and go after it. But she knew it was exactly the thing she needed the most. So she took this vacation with her sisters. And when she came back, she was so much more rejuvenated, so relaxed, and so much happier. She could see the effect her state had on her family, on her kids, and just how it benefited everybody else when she was relaxed and happy. So this gave her the fuel to become that mama lion and learned to take care of herself because she believed it benefited her whole family. She stopped the self-sacrificing and that kind of victim mindset she was in, the helpless, powerless baby bird. And she started to role model for her daughters calm leadership energy and creating a life that you want. So Deanna's story was Deanna learned about the listen lesson in the leading your teen class. And she started implementing it to get her 15 year old son to be more focused on his schoolwork. She saw the immediate success and how well it worked. But as soon as she saw it and felt this leadership energy, it clicked. She says, this is exactly my problem at work. This is why I keep getting overlooked for promotions. I'm not in my leadership energy. So she took the silver listen lesson into work and started commanding respect. She felt heard for the first time in years and unsurprisingly was offered a promotion and raise just eight weeks later. So getting kids to listen the first time you ask 
isn't about being mean or bossy. It's about harnessing your own natural leadership energy. I remember this one 12 year old girl I was teaching her. So we played this guy called a confidence charades, this game where they pulled a card out and they had to practice their confident energy. And so she drew this like ask, pretend I'm your neighbor and offer your babysitting services and tell me how much money you charge. Very hard for a 12 year old girl to do, right? So she pulls out this card and this girl was so quiet. She was so dainty. It's like a feather could knock her over. But I'll be damned if she didn't find that confident energy. And it was extremely quiet. It definitely was not loud or bossy. It was, it was just like, I believe I can take care of your kids for you. And I charge $8 an hour, whatever. And she just said it. And it was so beautiful. You could feel it. But it was definitely not loud or bossy or anything. It was her own natural connection with that leadership inside of herself. So how are you guys feeling? Are you ready? You ready to learn a listen lesson? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you excited? Are you suspicious? We are ready. I'm going to teach you these six steps. So I want to make sure you got your full attention on this because I'm going to go through it quickly. And it, it's, it's going to be so simple that you're going to think that won't work. <laughs> you're going to think it's too easy, Tori. So one of the three things that is going to happen when I teach you these six steps. Number one, you're going to implement it right away. As soon as the kids come home, you're going to use it and you're going to see magical results and you're going to be like, Woohoo, this is awesome. And if you do that, please go into the Super Mom is Getting Tired Facebook group and tell me, tell us, share it. Say it totally worked. This is what happened. I used my leadership energy and they did it because I love to hear or shoot me an email, send me a private message. I love hearing about this. Okay. So, first thing that's going to happen is you're going to implement it right away. I'm going to send you that cheat sheet. So, maybe you'll wait until you get your cheat sheet and you print it out and you can practice it in front of the mirror. You can practice it in front of your kids but I want to hear your successes. Number two thing that's going to happen is I'm going to tell you these six steps and you're going to be like, it's not going to work. No, I've already tried that. You're going to blow it off. Okay. So that might happen. If so, I want you to listen. I want you to come to me. I'm going to offer you something. Okay. If you find yourself doing that. The third thing that might happen is you'll try it and it won't work. And you'll think that the system doesn't work or you're going to blame yourself like I did. Like there's something wrong with me. I'm a failure. I can't get kids to listen. So if you are find yourself in number two or number three, I am offering a free coaching call for you because I want everyone to be successful. Stepping into your leadership energy is not just good for you. It's good for your kids. It's good role modeling. It's good for society. It increases happiness and it helps us stand up to injustice and advocate for those who need help. Like it's a good energy state to be able to access when you want it. And so if you don't believe me, or if you tried it and it doesn't work, I want you to schedule a free coaching call at lifecoachingforparents.com slash work with me. Okay. Cause we just need, it just means that something's blocking your energy and we need to clean that up and we'll meet on zoom so I can watch you. We can practice and you'll get it dialed in. So here it is, the silver listen lesson. Everybody pay attention. Silver is an acronym. It's going to help us remember these six different steps. S stands for same level as your child. If your kid is taller than you, you're going to have to climb up under a chair or have him sit down so that you can look at him in his eyes. You need to be at the same level. If your child is laying horizontally on the couch, you don't have to lay horizontally with them, but you just have to make sure that your head is at the same height as their head. Okay. And you'll see teachers do this all the time with kids. When they really want the kid to listen, they squat down and get on their level, especially uh, if you have an ADHD kid who you think ignores you, this works with ADHD kids too. I would add in one thing I'll tell you at the end. Um, so same level as your child. The I stands for imagine. Imagine that they will obey you. So if let's say your kid's laying on the couch and you want them to come to the kitchen table and do their homework. 
You're going to go over to them. You're going to get on their same level. So your head's at the same height. And you're going to picture in your head them standing up, walking to the kitchen table and taking out their homework. Okay. You've got to visualize it. But I also want you to imagine that they want to do that because they do. Our kids want to be responsible. They want to get a sticker on their homework chart at school. They don't want to miss recess. They want to make us proud. They want to be capable. So you've got to tap into that part of your higher brain, not your lower brain. That's like scared. They're going to yell at you and complain and argue, right? That's what we're doing now. That's not working. So you step into this. I imagine they're going to obey me and I imagine they want to do their homework right now. Okay. That's the I. The L is to look them in the eye and hold their gaze. Now, if they look away from you, that's fine. You just keep holding your gaze. But it's especially important to hold their gaze after you've made your request. So this is when it works most powerfully is you ask them to do what you're asking. You look them in the eye, the same level you say, I want you to get up off the couch, walk over to the table and do your homework. And you hold their gaze without saying any words. You want to create this vacuum, this empty space for them to fill. They're going to want to fill it. It's going to be amazing. (laughs) Because as long as you can hold that vacuum with silence, they will follow your picture in your head. Okay? That's the L. The V stands for voice tone. Notice that my voice tone was very clear, very calm, and articulate. It wasn't slurred or blurred speech. It wasn't mumbled. I knew what I was going to say before I said it. So you want to practice your words. Because once you start talking, if you aren't sure what you're going to say, then you're going to end up saying too many words. And you might jump around. Okay? So very few words and make sure they're calm and articulate and clear. E stands for the even body posture. So I put this picture here because this mom kind of looks like she's doing it. She's looking them in the eye. She's at the same level. She looks relaxed and calm, but kind of confident, but her leg is crooked. She's got one leg high and one leg low for whatever reason, because we're animals. I don't know. You want to have balanced body posture. So don't cross your arms. Don't cross your legs. Don't tilt your head. Um, don't, uh, you know, be crooked. I don't know why, but this is what works. And then the last one, the R is a request. You need to make a request using very few words. That's the hardest, but a very important part. The words you say are not as important. It's only 7% of the communication comes through words. So in some ways, it doesn't really matter, but the the thought you think impacts your energy. So if you say, I need you to turn off the TV and go do your homework, the thought I need suddenly puts you into some, a disempowered state because, you know, I don't need my kids to do this so that I can relax and be happy. That's losing my power. Okay. Okay. But if you say, I want you to turn off the TV, walk to the table and do your homework, that is more empowering. And so in some ways, the words don't matter. In other ways, they do because they impact the energy. So on the cheat sheet that you'll get, check your email. I gave some tips of hints like things like it's time. You can, you know, now is the time to turn off the TV. Like that's a good way to start. Something that's neutral that doesn't impact your energy. All right. So the silver listen lesson is S, same level of your child. I, imagine they will obey. L, look them in the eye and hold their gaze. V, voice tone. E, even body posture. R, request made with very few words. If you find that it doesn't work magically, then I have a coaching program for you. So, because we have a lot of obstacles that get in our way. And this, so I've created the Super Moms Getting Tired. It's 12 week coaching program. We do one on one coaching over phone or Zoom. And 
once a week for 12 weeks so that you will use this to change your brain, align your energy, be able to access your calm leadership energy whenever you want. And it's going to change the trajectory of your life so that you're not just stuck in a rut, but that you're actually creating a life that you want and utilizing all your skills and strength and talent in order to do that. It feels much, much more empowering, relaxing, and you get, it helps you just create uh, a life that's more aligned with your values, which you really want. So along with the one-on-one coaching calls, you get some videos where you get to watch other moms and their leadership energy. It's easy, sometimes it's easier to see, you know, in other people than in yourself. So you can watch them fall in and out of it. I'm going to give you some worksheets that you can use to coach yourself from that like disempowered state into that higher brain. So the Super Mom is Getting Tired Coaching Program helps you overcome your obstacles because there's a lot. We have a lot of things that block us from finding our leadership energy. But there, I do have a limited amount of time slots for coaching clients, as well as these free Zoom calls. I'm not sure how many people are going to take me up on it. So I cleared my calendar and made room, but they might fill super quickly. So if you think you want to kind of take this and run with it, go ahead and schedule that free Zoom call like a week or two out so that it's on your calendar and you can hold that spot for yourself before they all fill up. Okay. So whether you're interested in the coaching program or not, I would still sign up for the life coaching for parents.com slash work with me. That's the link that you're going to use to schedule your free call. And that's just no obligation. We'll just work on your energy on over zoom, tweak it. I can help you identify any obstacles. If you feel like they're getting in your way and you might not even need life coaching because it, you just figured out super quick. But this coaching program has completely transformed my home life, was a quote from Mara. She said the energy in her home took on a much more peaceful, relaxed state once she went through the life coaching program. So it really does impact the whole family, not just mama. So maybe you're thinking like Mark, he was a super dad who didn't think that this super, the silver listen lesson would work for him. His situation was that he shared custody. So any chores or routines that he tried to implement in his house felt, he felt like they got undermined when they went to mom's house because they were splitting half of the week. But on his free call, he realized that this was the belief that was keeping him from being in his leadership energy this belief that it was pointless because mom's going to undermine. Him. And so once we shifted his thinking, he was able to command the energy and therefore the respect that he deserved because this belief was so easy to undo, right? Because kids are di act differently from one parent to the other. They act differently at grandma's house than they do the neighbor's house. They just like for me, the same students, reacted differently to me than they did the neighboring teachers, right? They listened to them, but not didn't listen to me. So this idea that they had to be uniform and supported by both parents of both houses, that was just not true. And so once he undid that belief, he could access his calm leadership energy and get his kids to do whatever he wanted. So it's good to remember that there are many, many things that block our leadership energy and make us feel disempowered. Some of the common ones are, I shouldn't have to be doing this. I don't want to, I don't want to do this. You know, why do I have to make him do his homework? Shouldn't he just be able to do this himself? I don't want to have to manage my kids. This is not why I went to college. Like those kinds of thoughts definitely drain our energy and keep us from being in our power. But also thoughts like I have to do all the work around here. Everything falls on me. It's my job or my kids should just obey me. You know, I never would have gotten away with this crap with my parents. Like I just obeyed. I didn't have a choice. These kids are entitled. They're spoiled. Any of those are very common blocks to our accessing our leadership energy. So that's what we're going to do on the free calls. We're going to figure out what's getting in your way from accessing it so that you can be the confident parent that you're, you want to be and that your kids need. Coaching with Tori is the best investment you will ever make, says Melanie Miller. Yes, 
I 100% agree. It was transformative for her. It certainly was for me, but it's because it changes your brain. You're not just getting tools and strategies. You're actually rewiring your brain to think in a way that's more helpful. You know, it was Einstein who said, you cannot solve a problem from the same brain that created the problem, right? So we've got to change the brain first and then everything gets impacted. So maybe you're thinking like Sarah was. Sarah's like, okay, this sounds good, Tori, but it's like, I don't have time. I don't have time for coaching. I don't have an hour a week where I can spend on my own personal development, right? She had so many competing priorities and she was being pulled in many different directions. But she thought, well, maybe I'll just do the free call and I can get my kids to help out more and then I'll have more free time. But on the free call, she learned that she was doing this baby bird thing when it came to her relationship with time. She let her calendar, her kids, her to-do list dictate her days. So she was kind of like this baby bird. It's like, when do I get a break? When is it going to be time for me? When, you know, maybe somebody will notice that I'm tired and let me have a day off. You know, she was kind of doing this baby bird thing when it came to her schedule. And so when she signed up for coaching, she learned how to use her leadership energy to create a quality life that she loved that was aligned with her values. Not only did she get more help and support from her family, but she started prioritizing the things that she wanted to do. And as she respected her time and her schedule, so did her family, right? We teach our kids how to treat us. If she wasn't being respectful of her own time, then the kids saw no need to be respectful of her time either. I signed up for life coaching with Tori to help me with parenting, and it ended up saving my marriage. So it's Christine. Yeah, she was really surprised about that. (laughs) But it's just because you learn to focus on the things you have control over and let go of the things you don't. And what's crazy is that we have a lot more control than we realize. And moms really like that because they're usually trying to control things anyways, right? Because we want to stop worrying. We want to enjoy our lives. And we think the way to enjoy it is to you know, get these things done, but it's really about an energetic shift and helping our brain think in a more helpful way. So on the free 30 minute zoom call, what we're going to do is we're going to practice the silver listen lesson over zoom. We're going to clear up beliefs or identify them at least that are blocking your energy. What's getting in your way from getting what you want. And then if you have questions about the coaching program, um, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, If I feel like you're a good fit, I can tell you a bit more about it. If not, hopefully I'll just leave you with some good strategies and a felt sense of what it's like when you're in your leadership energy. So you can go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash work with me and sign up. But like I said, make sure you do it quickly because I don't know how many spots will be taken and then I don't know how many will remain. So sooner rather than later is my suggestion to you. So you might be thinking what a lot of moms come to coaching to thinking that I'm not used to spending money on myself. There's not a budget line item uh, for self-improvement or life coaching. Like, I'm not sure where that money can come from. That's a really common thing to think about, right? But I would like to point out that we do spend a lot of money trying to feel better, right? We might remodel our home. Because we want to feel relaxed and comfortable in our home. We want people to feel welcome when they come over. We want to create a nice home environment for our family. But we might spend twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 creating this nice, peaceful home environment to then be filled with nagging and yelling. <laughs> so better to focus on learning how to create a nice, peaceful home environment first. And then you can enjoy any remodeling projects you happen to do. Right? We might spend five grand on a family trip to Disney so that we can get some quality time with our kids, to just play and relax. But then we come home and it's right back to where we were before. I say better to learn how to be more relaxed and playful no matter where you are than the trip to Disney is just icing on the cake. You know, we spend a lot of money on our kids 
when it comes to club sports, activities, private school, private tutors, like we, we have much more willing to spend money on them without even realizing that we are our child's most powerful influence. And that if we can learn how to be confident in ourselves, then our kids can pick up on that too and learn because children learn by imitation. And some days we might even end up like, I need a spa day. I'm super burned out. We might get our hair colored or get a massage or get mani pedis. And those are nice and really important. I certainly advocate for them. They just don't last very long. Where life coaching is really a rewiring of the brain in a more positive way that helps you think differently and helps you create the life that you want. So I agree that it is a very worthwhile investment. So you might be thinking, okay, Tori, this is great. I want to, but I want to figure it out on my own. You taught me what to do. I'm going to go try to do it. That is awesome. My goal is to have so many energized, empowered super moms out there that I have worked myself out of a job. My suggestion is to schedule an appointment for a, a week or two out. I only have so many openings available. So if you have a week to like practice and implement this leadership energy, then you might notice some obstacles coming up and it'll be perfect timing by the time your appointment rolls around. Because maybe you're really good at getting your kids to help out and clean the kitchen. And, you know, after dinner, everybody does the dishes and that's great. But maybe you have a hard time going to the gym. You want to go, but you're finding all these excuses and reasons why your kids need you to be home and why it's too hard and you're too tired. And so maybe you want to use your calm leadership energy in other areas. Okay. So I think spend a week, notice which areas are easy for you and which areas are a big struggle. Uh, maybe chores are easy, but home school works hard. Maybe, um, you know, it, it's just different areas. Maybe advocating for yourself is harder than advocating for your kids. Maybe you're okay with your kids, but when it comes to talking to the teacher, you like get all nervous and flustered, whatever. So spend a week, Notice yourself, notice where it's easy for you to ask for what you want and where it's difficult, and then have that appointment on the calendar so we can work through it when it rolls around. This is a tool that you will always have in your back pocket. So I was trying to get my son to fill out some paperwork. He he wasn't doing it. He's away at college. You know, there's things I'm trying to get him to do. And I felt naggy. You know, I'm like texting him or emailing him, reminding him. I was worried about him not getting it done because he's a huge procrastinator. So I felt like I had to kind of stand top of it and ride him all the time. But then I was like, didn't want to be naggy. So I'm like, should I text him? Should I call him? You know, I trust that he's going to do it. I was just in this yucky state. But I'm preparing for this webinar. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I have the silver listen lesson (laughs) right here. And I realized I had only been talking on the phone and texting and emailing. I hadn't looked him in the eye. I hadn't seen his face. So I couldn't use my body posture. And so I scheduled a FaceTime call. We talked about this paperwork and he got it done like that. So it is a tool you will always have in your back pocket that is super handy to use anytime in the future. So if you guys have questions, you can put them in the chat. I've got some here that people uh, emailed me earlier, so I'm going to answer those. But this is the link that you can go to to schedule your free call, lifecoachingforparents.com slash work with me. And I will, uh, any questions you have there, I can answer them privately. But um, Melissa wrote in the chat, she says, I'm four weeks in and it's awesome. She writes about the uh, life coaching program, Super Mom's Getting Tired. And yeah, it's, she, it's so fun because we're over Zoom and I can see her energy going from really depleted. Every time we talk, she's got more and more light in her eyes, more and more uh, color in her cheeks. Like you could just see the energy going up every time we talk. Super fun. So um, another question is, uh, is this why kids are so picky about teachers, especially in middle school? Yes. Have you noticed that, right? So middle schoolers are really tuned into energy. And so if the teacher has one little thing that's off, 
they will just reject them. And, and I would say even with their peers, this is why it's such kind of a judgy age. Um, but because, yeah, high school kids are pretty picky about teachers too, right? And it's all about energy. And they're really tuned into it. Kids are wired to follow a calm, confident leader. And if you are not in that aligned energetic state, they will just walk all over you because they, they want, they don't want to be the strongest authority in the room. Uh, they, they really like it when somebody else is, you know, it's nice to be with somebody who has that leadership energy about them. Uh, another question says, what about dads? Does this is work with dads. And absolutely. I've got a lot of dads I'm working with right now. And dads are socialized differently where moms or women are more socialized to think it's not okay to ask for what I want and to be in this kind of disempowered energy of like, they should just know and I shouldn't have to ask. Dads are socialized that kids should just obey me, that if I ask, they should respond and obey. And if they don't, it's disrespectful. But I will tell you, one of the, a very common block for both moms and dads that gets in our way is the thought he's disrespecting me. When you believe your child's behavior is disrespectful to you, your energy will wane. You'll drop. You won't be in your power and it, your kids won't respond. So you really got to watch out for that. So men are more socialized to like yell and like, hey, you need to do what I say. And, you know, certainly the voice tone and the volume does help kids um, respond, right? So I remember my husband was, uh, my friend and my husband were both coaching my son's soccer team. And my friend's voice was really high pitched. Come on, boys, do this, go there, la la. And the kids just tuned her out, whether if, whether they heard her or not, I don't know, but it just did not connect with their brain. So she would tell my husband what to say, and then he would yell it with his assertive voice tone that was clear and calm and confident and audible and articulate, where hers was just way too high, where the kids just didn't uh, register with it. So yes, dads are, are different, but for sure, dads can benefit from this program. Um, and you know, if you could split it, if you say, okay, I, um, we both, my husband and I need to work on our energy. We need to learn this calm leadership energy. We're going to buy 12 coaching sessions. You can split it 50, 50, you know, mom gets six and dad gets six. Uh, somebody asks, did you make this up? <laughs> the silver, yes, silver listen lesson. And the answer is yes. I made it up because I couldn't find anybody else who was teaching it except for Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. If you watch that show or read his books, he talks more about the energy of how to get dogs to obey than anybody else. He's a great parenting coach, <laughs> but he didn't really break it down into six steps. And I wanted to be simple because your mama's and you're busy, right? So, and I really want you to, to learn this. It's super exciting and fun. So um, the next question is, do I need anything before the call or how do I prepare for the call? So the free Zoom call, we're going to practice your leadership energy and that you just need to have a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Um, you know, we don't want your kids hearing you from the other room, like clean your room, you know, clean your room in your room and <laughs> practicing different energy. So quiet place where you'll be disturbed. You can be in your car, you can be on your phone, but no, you don't really need to prepare for anything. It's just, it's 30 minutes. Um, if you have questions about the life coaching program, you can, you know, ask me that. Um, it's really going to be like, we'll start just practicing the energy. We'll look and identify any obstacles. If I feel like you're a good fit for my life coaching program, I'll tell you more about it. If not, then you'll have some good strategies and tools in your pocket. So win-win. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. Um, my kid is coming home from college. Will this work with him? Yes, absolutely. This works with, I mean, people of all ages, we're all humans, right? We're all these human animals who respond to human energy. So it works with clerks at Starbucks, <laughs> works with waiters at the restaurants. The, the warning I want to give you is that when kids are very verbal, so basically when they get older and they talk a lot and you assume they understand your words, 
we become more dependent on words and we forget about posture and voice tone. So uh, we're preschool when you're, when they're in preschool, it's almost like easy to remember that posture and voice tone are more important because we don't necessarily think they understand everything they, that we say, but a college kid, we expect them to be extremely verbal. So yes, just remind yourself, talk less, <laughs> mind the posture and the voice tone. Um, my kid fights for power. Won't he fight harder if I try to assert my power? Okay. This is a really good question. Because there is a huge distinction between a power struggle and calm leadership energy. Because yes, absolutely, you do not want to get into this power struggle. If your kid's fighting for power and you are pulling equally in the opposite direction. So if you have a kid who fights for power or somebody who's a very strong-willed and likes, you know, is motivated to have power, it's actually because more important for you to have that calm leadership energy because it's just unnerving for a kid to feel like the most powerful person in the room. And you can show them what real authentic power looks like, that it's really can be quite quiet, can be quite um, calm and very confident, and yet very powerful. And so you really want to role model that for them instead of getting into this tit for tat of like, you said that to me, and I need to say, now I'm going to be the authority, and now you're going to tell you what to do, and, and getting into that lower level of energy. I would say if your kid fights for power, then for sure you want to master this uh, calm, confident leadership energy. All right. So any other questions? We can talk about it on the Zoom calls. You can go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash work with me. And it was great to have you guys here with me today. I wish you well. I will love you and leave you. Want a free life coaching session? Go to lifecoachingforparents.com and schedule yours today. And thank you so much for listening. I would love it if you would subscribe and share these podcasts with your friends. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on the air, go to lifecoachingforparents.com slash record my question, and you can send me a voicemail recording or write me an email and I'll answer it on the air. Thanks again. Have a great day.